Welcome everyone to today's show. We have today a special guest, Ian Kay. He's a brand builder, full-time motivator, and a coach from LA. Welcome, Ian, to our show. Um, and I'm really happy to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. It's Friday, so I feel like me and everyone else included something about Friday, but I'm doing great. And thank you so much for, for having me on the show today. Thank you. Could you share, share us a little bit more about your background? It's very diverse in what you do. Um, so we'd love to hear, you know, what you do currently and also what inspired you currently, you know, um, with the path that you're on right now. Sure. So I do project management and I'm a product developer. So I help bring products to market. We do contract manufacturing, have a great team. Um, and uh, we do a lot of high-end promotional products. So when it comes to branding items, knowing the intention of the campaign, whether it's a promotion, whether this is a buy one, get one, or whether it's going to be sold on someone's um, you know, website or in their storefront, or the fact that they just want to carry it um, you know, in their store, this is what we do as a team. And we put projects together from the beginning to end stages. And I just love the development process because you really have to focus on um, like the identity of stuff. And I feel like my identity of being able to realize that um, so many things of like living a purpose-driven life, I had to connect the dots in my life. And I had like a near-death experience and some childhood trauma when I was growing up. I was actually attacked by a Rottweiler when I was seven years old. And it was a near-death experience. Um, the dog got out. It just attacked me. I was very fortunate to survive and got surgery. But the point is, is I almost lost my life. So if I didn't get saved from my neighbor who choked this dog off me, and kind of heal myself through psychiatrists and know all these things. It didn't happen overnight, but I just kind of kept fighting and not giving up on, you know, not being this victim. So I really did hard work of like, kind of like overcoming that. So I feel like mm -hmm. at seven years old of having a lot of adversity and a lot of things on your plate, everyone's going to experience stuff, whether it's children or anyone that's born with something. And that's a whole nother thing. Cause I was actually born with a congenital heart defect. So I have aortic stenosis. So I've been going into the cardiologist and doctor's office ever since I was the age of five. So just like growing up with kind of health issues and things like that, I kind of lived in fear growing up. And it's almost like I had to kind of conquer these things and these surgeries or these external factors that happened in my life to then find the best version of me. And that's now Ian e you know, like, and, and, and the thing is, is I'm still figuring out the best way to make a difference in this world. But like, I am only who I am from my actions and who I am, not what I say I am, I'm, I am what I do. And that's what I'm saying. The people that are involved in your life, whether it's my family, my support system have really defined and helped me become who I am today because they care about me the most because they're in my life the most, you know, those top five people in your family. And I'm just saying like, it's so important to put family first. And if you don't have family, find friends because I have many friends that are closer to my heart and dear to me than blood and family. So I just feel like whatever it is to you or however you're going to identify yourself in the world or what you want to do as a career, just know that it's going to be things that you can't control at one, at one point that happened to you. And it's going to be you asking the right question to the universe, to God, and, and knowing that you can actually be okay when you kind of surrender and you have to figure that out. It didn't happen. It doesn't happen at the perfect time. I'm 33 years old, but they're the stage of being seven years old and having the dog attack. And then 14, my first, first open heart surgery, and then 26, another ones, but, you know, having other failed business ventures and family divorcing and all these things, like, you know, the only thing you control is yourself in your life. Mm -hmm. That's all you can do. So there's going to be always circumstances. There's going to be things going on that are out of control. But when you can figure out your own way to control your emotions yourself, that's when you're starting to be kind of the best person of yourself and personally developing yourself. And that's what I'm saying. It's so important to deal with coaches like you and me that have done the hard work over years of experience, whether it's trauma, whether it's just having self-limiting beliefs, you have to ask the right questions, but you also have to kind of like get outside your comfort zone and seek the help. And I'm so happy that at a young age, I was able to seek the help from doctors and other things. So it gave me the ability to really be there for the people and be that mentor, be that friend, be that coach. So I know wow, that was a lot. That's <laughs> immense. That's so immense. But the life threatening experiences that you had, like what kept you going during those hard times and how did this, you know, like change your life later for the better, like before it happened and then after, I guess it's a lot, but could you share a few examples? Uh, yeah, I guess like just really pouring everything into the first startup that I launched with my brother called Rally Flip Cap, where there's two double build hats. We're trying to make hats more fun, really fun. I'm, I've been an athlete my whole life. 
I, um, I didn't play baseball in college, but I played up to high school. So I decided to like study media graphics. I'm a graphic designer at heart. So I'm a, when I build brands, whether it's the copy, whether it's the packaging design, I have the graphics and backgrounds where I'm overseeing projects and working with a lot of other developers, uh, a lot of packaging and artists, uh, you know, so like when it comes to the artwork and all that, we were talking about this earlier, it's so important, whether you're an entrepreneur or anything, everyone's a creator. You have to be your own artist. Why should art at your fingertips at a young age or when you're in school and you're playing with Crayola crayons, why should that stop for you later in your life? Like I'm creative with my workouts. I'm creative with all my meals. I'm creative with the conversations I have and the relationships I build. I'm creative with how I can explain something that's complex very simply and easily to someone. So like you have to use your creativity and every one of us has intrinsic value. Like there's Ethan Hawke, and there's people out there that can't walk or can't do certain things, but they have brilliance and genius in other aspects of their life. So I just feel like um, during when I was going out there into the world and educating people about why my brother and I, athletes, my brother played football, were passionate about flipping our hats and bringing fun and entertaining experiences for people wearing hats at games, but also if you want to rally. And the point is, is once we started saying, how can we not sell this hat mm-hmm. and get sales from it? How can we provide value to someone that's going to wear this in a game where they can have fun and how can like we make a difference or at least talk about our dream of making this reality through our problems. Like my brother had OCD growing up. He had struggled with obsessive compulsive disorder and he was a place kicker for Berkeley. So he channeled a lot of his, um, you know, flaws into being obsessed. And that's why he like really cared. It, it took us almost two years to write the patent of Rally Foot Cat back in 2010. And we launched it about 2014. Uh, mm-hmm. So like, I just feel like that's when we were, the minute I said, hey, I'm going to really start to not think about us and put the focus on the people that are going to value from this hat or how I can talk about our story about me having Tourette syndrome. And I always kind of was scared going out there because people would make fun of me because I actually would twitch my eyes. Mm-hmm. I would tick my mouth and jerk my neck. Uh, because from the dog attack, I actually struggled with uh, Tourette syndrome because I went into shock. So neurologically, the psychiatrist at a young age was like, yeah, like you have this uh, stress induced Tourette syndrome from your post traumatic stress of the dog attack. So I actually like grew up kind of being bullied and, and struggled with those mental health issues. So I was like, I had the physical issues of my scars on my arm and my heart, but then also mental issues of like people making fun of me and them not understanding why I'm like literally what makes me tick. And I, this is me being a 10 year old and not understanding my involuntary movement. So it's like, I just, I just, my heart goes out to so many people that are struggling with stuff where they're trying to reach out to the doctors and all these people, but the best advice that comes from people that have struggled with it. So reach out. Like I'm, I'm very a big involved with just whether it's uh, Cedar Sinai or heart warrior Um, communities on Instagram and other different platforms, your tribe will find you when you speak your truth. And whether it's me being able to speak my truth through the first business venture and startup that I launched with my brother. And like, I'm saying like, it's fun to get behind the scenes and start a business from scratch. So we had this idea in our, in our hand, in our head. And at one point we worked so hard years later to hold it in your hand. Like it's like, it's like beyond passing the SAT, beyond graduating like college, like all these pivotal moments. It's not about when you get the, the, the sale or, oh, we got millions. We got finally got into some. No, it's like when you get one stage closer to what you plan on doing, you're just going down the line. And, and that's the thing. It's like you can fail three out of 10 times being a professional athlete in baseball, but you're batting 300. You're 10 at bats. You strike out three, you know, seven times, but you get on base three. So like that's a success. So I'm just saying when you're in business, be in business for tomorrow and just hit the goals every month to three months, not just sales goals, but little goals. When you can hit everything else behind the scenes, no one knows <laughs> the effort, the time, the money, the heartache that goes into a product before it's launched. I'm just saying, it's just, it's crazy. You'll be seeing people film stuff like, oh, this is our packaging and doing this just to get the marketing hype before they launch. But they really don't know how long it takes before you measure six times and cut once, you know, like, it's just, it's crazy. And that's the thing. You're always going to have hiccups in the startup world, have hiccups. That's why I love build, measure, learn. And uh, the best book that I would offer anyone is called the lean startup by Eric Reese. Lean, read the lean startup because it talks about every business and everything. You have to always improve and make it better and look for those key performance indicators. It's the person in your organization or in your life. That's going to say, that says, this is the way that things have always been done. 
that's the person you have to stay away from because that's going to be an old school, not a beginner's mindset mentality. And, and, it, and it, it, the only way to progress and improving it better is to innovate and realize what's not working and make things better. It's just little switches and twitches. Mm -hmm. We're all not perfect. So I just feel like when you can do that with your life or your business every now and then, that's when you can then get out of your comfort zone, get out of your own way. Cause we all get stagnant over time. So I'm just saying like, put yourself first, but like have a dream or a goal. Like if there's no passion behind what you're doing every day, then what's the point of doing? You don't need to start a business. You don't need to start a brand. You don't need to do all those things, but like have something that's a dream and, and, and work towards it every day. Don't, don't just dream it and wake up, go to bed every day, like put an hour or 20 minutes of your dream, mm -hmm. a little bit of action every little day. And you'll be surprised what it could be and how it can resonate in people. And if you really care to talk about yourself in a way that's not about yourself, in a way that's about value with your product or service, then you literally figure it out. It's all figure outable when you put in the work and you take the action. Wow, I love that. That's a whole motivation speech. Well, but I think awesome. it's so true, you know, like many people, they think big and, but they don't do big. And I think it's so important to back it up as well. And uh, you touch on so many points on, you know, like the whole full ownership and then the passion that is behind. And also like, you know, for me, the most impressive thing, like talking to you is like, you had so many like traumatic events, which everyone of course had in their own way, but in your way, it's like a lot of like medical things as well, like things that were really physically and emotionally. So, and there are many people, you know, they, they live in this victim role and they say, because of that happened, I am this way and that's it. But then there are these people who take full ownership and like, yeah, because that happened to me, I will do this and this. And then, you know, they own it fully and they turn it into mm -hmm. their advantage. So what has happened in you internally to flip that? Um, because I guess in those situations, I mean, it was really dark, it was so hard, but what helped you to flip that situation around into something really positive that actually built for you, you know, and you discovered the purpose around that? Yeah, that's, that's really a great question. And it's broad, and I can answer that in so many ways. But I just want to say like, one thing that really helped me focus on me, and my inner voice, my inner child, and all these things, because I like to tell everyone, it's like, be childlike, not childish. Everyone can be childish and, you know, get angry, throw fit, you know, and I, and my wife helps me every now and like, I have to get form of my breath. And I just feel like it's the simplest thing because at one point I couldn't control like my facial tics and some of your involuntary or what you can control with your body and motor control and cognitive function type of thing. But I just say like when, when I was able to really take breaths of like just focusing on breath work and there's so many different forms, there's people, there's masters and yoga and But I just feel like you, you can go on YouTube and search one. You can do something yourself. But when you can focus, just like, hey, I'm going to go cook this pizza, right? You look up a recipe and a nice book, and then you go and get it, right? So I just feel like when you say, hey, I'm going to focus on just being in control of my breath right now. And when you take that task and then you go implement it, and even if you don't feel better, like just know that like you designate a time towards something. It's kind of like, I just feel like, you know, universal why, um, universal, the universal way mm -hmm. is about science meeting what what do you say like science meeting um yeah it's about you. evolving our own science right so it's about the enlightenment beautiful. the peace so you need to evolve your own science that comes with see that science. that is beautiful and that's why i want you to say that it's invoking the sciences of you and that's the thing everyone needs to be their own scientist like i said an artist or a creator you have to have an hypothesis something like a mission what what you want or a question and then you got to experiment experiment every day Like what, why so many people are, fa are, are scared to fail or get a wrong answer and experiment and experiment every day. And it's not like that L life reality is not like high school or school. Okay. P in school. Oh, I have a question. Like you're looked at as the stupid kid. When you don't get something, ask away in life, ask questions, the more, all the things that all the answers and tools that have unlocked the greatest things in my life came from the questions that I asked the universe. And those questions that you ask is your conversation with yourself. And I just feel like the minute I started working on my breath work and I was able to focus on my vision, my dream, my reality, I wrote it down. So I just feel like writing down a plan and I wrote down my plan from a great book too. I want to recommend is Think and Grow Rich. I know a lot of people talk about that, but that book is something to me. Just like every movie or every book or every person that you ever talk to, the relationship that you have with that thing, person or movie is, you know, maybe unique to you. So I just feel like for that, that book, Napoleon Hill, um, Think and Grow Rich, 
it really, he, he spent time with the people that were building the industries. Imagine if you were able to spend time with Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, okay? He spent time with Andrew Carnegie, Henry Ford, Carnegie Steel Railroad System, travel, movement, everything. Ford, travel, movement. You know, people, if, you, if Henry Ford asked everyone what they wanted, everyone would have said faster horses. Sometimes you need to go all in on your passion. If you might be right, like Gary Vee says, Gary Vee was right when he started working for his dad's company. And that's similar to me helping my dad's company. So it's like when, when, when you're right for pursuing something that you didn't abandon the ships when they were burning, the reward comes to you. And I just feel like when you do the hard work and you, it shows that you're happy to be alive when everything in your favor or whatever has happened to me, I should be like a, an upset person. No, life's, I didn't choose my life. I didn't choose my name. It was given to me, you see? So I choose to just be me and be free. And, and, and I'm here for a reason, like you and everyone else here. We're here to coexist and we're all here to learn from each other. Like, and we're all here to come up with what our life was to us. That's why leave a legacy. What do you want to, what do you want the world to remember you by? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you want the world to remember by you or on an individual level? How do you want people to remember you by? It's not about what you're going to accomplish. It's not about all the things that you're going to win at. But when you're going to be happy with who you are every day and work towards a better version of yourself, then you're going to see all the creation, all the things that you thought was a dream can become the reality. It's possible. It's possible with people like you and me that fight for what they want in their life and they show up every day as their true selves. Because all you can do is show up as your true self every day. And when you're you and you're you and you show up, you're going to be taken seriously. And everyone else that's not showing up as themselves, you know, who are you? You know, and it's tough. I've been lost in my, in my life so many times, but I had to ask the right questions and I had to do the work every single day and focus on that work. Even when no one was looking, even when I wasn't posting on social media and when I just focused on what do I want to progress with, with not taking a screenshot of it and showing people my story. No, no, it's just me. Like, what am I going to do? I don't want to be, I don't want to influence anyone else right now other than what I want to do with my life. And then it's the people that can figure out something for themselves, that whole life balance that they're then able to help other people with, whether it's Wim Hof with breathing. And then it's like, whoa, the breathing with Wim Hof worked for him or whether Tyson Beckford changed with that Beckford bar. Oh, well, you know what? It's changed my life too. Cause I got a better chest from it too. So it's like these, these people and entities and, and the brands and businesses, what's most important about it is the people behind them, the people behind these brands and businesses and ideas and why they're doing what they're doing. That's the name of the game right? Why is mm -hmm. Mickey Mouse and Disneyland so fucking interesting and Marvel and Star Wars now? Because Walt Disney had a fucking idea and a dream and he did something with that and he wanted to bring entertainment, but that entertainment or whatever became what it is now. So, and they had really good people involved with Disney and everything, you know, but there's a lot of failures in life and business. You have to keep moving forward. It's just, like life's going to go on when we're not here, regardless, just everyone is here for a limited amount of time. When you can realize that we like time is the most biggest asset and health, time and health. If you don't have time mm -hmm. and you don't have health, you're not here. So I just, it's just like every day is a gift. And I'm just focused on that. When I wake up, I have my energy and I, I have my morning mantra. I, 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 I remember all the things that I've fought and hard for and been through. And it kind of keeps me hard at core into my source. And that's how I'm able to then, you know, protect, have boundaries, limit and focus and channel my energy. It's all through time management and experience. Like with anything, you want to ride a bike, you want to jump a rope. They acquire a little bit of a skill. And in order to get better at a skill, you got to be consistent, persistent. And, and like you said before, own, own your flaws, take ownership of your mistakes. Mm -hmm. Be responsible for the life that you want. Be responsible for the things that you didn't do good enough right now. It's okay. We all fuck up. But when you can own your truth, own your failures, then you can turn it around. You can turn those failures and those things around because you're only as good as your last at bat. Don't talk or live in the past. I don't care about how good of what you out. What are you currently doing right now? And what, what are you working on right now for the better vision of the future? Like, what, like I, that's what I care about. Like I, I you know, I studied graphic design and art in school, but I mean, I would consider myself a futurist because it's like, 
if you're going to live in the future, it's going to be created from what you're doing, you know? So it's like everyone teach their own, but I'm just saying like the futurists and the people that shape the world are the ones that at one point had an idea and did something with it. It's just that simple. There's it's, it's, the create it's, it's creating every single day. The world's like, like Jumanji. There's little worlds in our own world. <laughs> yes it's you know it's actually a crazy thing about it as also the example with Walt Disney it all started with one single thought the keyword imagination and you know it's also something that helped me a lot to contribute to my mental well-being and health like imagination um, and acting beyond all of the circumstances and also what you mentioned like being true to oneself I think it's really important and it's also crazy when because when I sometimes ask people who are you they're like, yeah, I'm Austin June or whatever their name is. I'm like, no, but who are you really? Like, that's your name. And uh, when you ask such ground deep questions, like who are you? Uh, what is the purpose of your life and whatever? You know, you know, people who have straightforward an answer and then, you know, people, they're like, eh, eh, you know, they take like 10 seconds and you know exactly those are the people who never really dig deeper into themselves. Mm -hmm. And I always say, as you know, this is the whole inspiration science about is like you evolve a science that helps you because you succeed the highest when you do you. And it's the same thing in business, in life, because I believe, you know, it's, there is this no general way that I always talk about. You have to find your own science in life. But what helps though is of course the experiences. It helps to see other perspectives, a new reality, the awareness, and then you shape something out of you um, that is true to you. And you go with that because that's the long-term success. And I think that many people, they are very superficial, you know, like we go after the things that just like looks good. And the same thing with the names, the titles, the verification badge, a certain feature. And you feel good externally, but something feels kind of not, you know, like fulfilled internally. And I think what you've just said, like, focusing on the things that really matter on the people the business is about people and about the inner things that is true to you the values aligned I think that's what create immense spiritual success and to me it's like to unlock the metrics like on how many souls you unlocked in life and I think that's when I say to people I want to build a net worth of trillion billion my mom or everyone is like oh you're so crazy how can you do that you little girl I'm like yeah little there <laughs> but inside you know it's the whole spiritual matrix and the spiritually spirituality it's like where the biggest abundance like happens and in business, we often don't talk about it, you know, and it's like business, business strategy, but it's like very little tiny tip of iceberg of the business, you know, so it's immense. It takes, it, it takes empathy and re real empathy and real selflessness to put yourself in someone else's shoes at the end of the day. It takes very much, and a lot of people that are fake or that are chasing the BS don't, don't think about those things and don't do it. And that's what I'm saying. When you're on this personal development growth journey, not even entrepreneurship or health, but just your life journey, there's going to be your own family members and your own friends that once knew you that are going to question what you're doing because you're changing so much and they don't know that internal dialogue you've had with yourself. They don't know those conversations, the hard work that you've been putting in your secret lair or that you've been living in the dark or doing your things, mm -hmm. living in the dark with all your light inside your heart. Oh, and then yeah. you start doing other things and then everyone's like, whoa, they still look at you, look you over there. Like, whoa, that per whoa, they're now they have muscle. Well, they have muscles. Well, now they're talking about like enlightenment things. Like are they Shakespearean now? Wait, they're, they're educated. They're reading books. It's like when you read a book, you get insight over someone's logic, their experience, what they've done. Mm -hmm. You put yourself in their shoes, that empathy what I just talked about. And I'm just saying, when you build your business and you really give to your clients and give to your prospects or the people that you feel genuinely with your integrity can value from your product or your service, it shows. The reputation speaks. The solution to their problem is there without you having to say it. You know, I'm just saying like when you're consistent, the best way to be taken seriously is be consistent. You want to have the network of a trillion. I, great. You'll get it if you really work hard, because what's more important than what's in your bank account or who you know in your network mm -hmm. is who in your network like 
Ian K, I know you very well. This is one of the first conversations we've had with, with this. We've been in other groups, but I've known you very well over a couple of years. So the point is, is what's more important about, oh, I know, so, what's more important than who you know is who knows you and what's their impression about you? Have you provided more value into their life or asking more of the questions like, who are you? Why, what's your purpose? Every time you do that, you're providing a gift to someone and I'm sure you know it by now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that. The question, change your questions, change your life. It's very, yeah, eye opening for people. But thank you so much for sharing your insights. I think it's very uh, inspiring, uh, also practical and motivating as well. So I hope that the audience can take something and, again, as we say, do something big out of it instead of just thinking big. Um, so that's a big thing. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Where can people best connect with you? Yes, no, thank you so much for having me on, on the show too. The best way they connect with me, I'm active on Instagram. So I-A-N-G-K-A-Y, but also just more information on like personal development, coaching. This is more one-on-one -on -one work, nothing to do with business, nothing to do with branding. Uh, you can check me out on heycoachk.com. That's H-E-Y-C-O-A-C-H-K.com. And um, yeah, like I, like I like to say, I have the mark of the beast and the heart of an angel because you know, I have scars on my chest and scars on my arm. So it's just when you can let your wounds lead you to be wise and use your wounds as wisdom, use your wounds and the things that you're not happy with to question those and, and just try to find the light in it. Because I promise it's, it's the brokenness of the glass. It's the darkness that the people or the artists can figure out a way to, to put it together or find the light. And, and everyone that's ever been whole at one point, I'm telling you at some little point in their life, they have been broken. And, and, they're, and they focus more on that wholeness of themselves to get there. And don't ever compare yourself to me, you, or anyone. You need to compare yourself to the person that you want to be, like the best version of, of who you are. And only that is inside you. Like you said, you got to tap into that matrix. You have to find your own Morpheus in your life. You have to find mentors and coaches in your life if you're your own Neo. And you have to find these things and study religions, study culture, study history, study philosophies, and then adapt them into your own life. And if I've done that, anyone else can do that. But like I said, if you get in a car and you don't know your destination, how the hell are you going to get there? Everyone needs to get into their car of life and figure out the best ways to navigate. And, uh, and, and I'm just saying, you're doing that hands down and especially with your universal way. And you know, the universal connection is the purpose behind people. It's the human spirit behind band, brands, businesses. It's the human connection. And when you can tap that, with what you're doing or what you focus on doing, that's when you can understand what someone is doing and how they're not, you know, constantly talking about it, but doing it actively. Cause it's one thing to sell something and to kind of oversell it. And then when you can just talk about it and like let people know by asking the right questions and going over it, kind of breaking it down, that's when it becomes easier. All right. Well, I love it so much. There's so much wisdom. You know, I love wisdom. It always comes through the deepest conversation. But I'm um, awesome. I will include the social media links so people can give you a follow and also connect with you. Um, again, thank you so much for coming on my show and uh, speak to you next time. Thank you so much and take care and keep keep spreading positivity, love and truth. Okay, beautiful souls, thank you so much for taking time out of your day life to untangle wisdom and abundance on all levels. If you feel connection to this audio experience, share it with your friends, follow us on Instagram, Your Universal Way, and my personal Instagram, Ossin June, O double C I N J U N. And always remember, there is no right or wrong way, just your universal way. See you next time.